Big City. There is all of life in the life of a city, among the steel and concrete, behind the bricks and mortar, in the crowded streets and lonely alleyways is drama and comedy, romance and mystery, suspense and tragedy. All are there in any big city. Song, a story of Rome. Rome, great alma mater of the Western world, ancient city, seat of emperors, generals, princes, and popes. Eternal city, where the pines still whisper on the Palatine, where the crumbling forum breathes the glory of the past, where the Sistine Chapel glows with the genius of Michelangelo. Rome, where newer and stranger arts hold counsel with the old, where a pale young Roman walks into a neon and chrome bar on the Via Vittoria Veneto one hot June night. Mineral waters. Signore. Mineral waters. Uh, but, Signore, I have the best vermouth, the finest wine. Please, mineral waters. Of course, of course, as the Signore desire. <sighs> well, well, well. What? Alessandro, it is you. Where did you come from? I thought I made it quite clear that I had no desire to see my relatives by marriage ever again. No, no, Romolo, that's no way to greet an old friend, not to say brother-in-law. Your mineral water, signor. Thank you. And for your friend? Thank you, I will not take anything. Very good, signor, as you will. <laughs> mineral water, eh? <laughs> well, the Romolo we knew is gone. In his place... A teetotaler. It is even worse, you'll be glad to hear, Alessandro. It is mineral waters or else for me. My doctors tell me just one little glass of wine. Well, I leave it to you. Excuse me. As bad as that, eh? <laughs> Poor Romulo. 700 years of noble tradition coming to a full stop in you. No, Alessandro. Not if I'm careful and drink nothing stronger than these mineral waters. But you still have no air, eh, Romolo? Why don't you marry again? Carla wouldn't mind, I assure you. She would never set me free. <laughs> Who do you think you are fooling, Alessandro? As long as there is money, she will be there. How can you talk like that? Listen, I do not know what you want. But I can assure you, you will not get it. I told you to take her away and leave Rome forever, and I meant it. I am not the sort of man to change my mind because a little time has passed. A little? Two years? Short enough. Supposing I told you she wants to see you. Wants to see me? Yes. You find that hard to believe? So she is here too in Rome. Of course. My sister and I have always traveled together since... Well, since. You've never quite forgiven yourself for what happened, have you? Be quiet. I should think you haven't. Hmm. I begin to see now. I, I was never sure before. I know how things cling around the memory. But in your case... Shut up! I want nothing to do with either you or her. I'll tell you what. We'll come here to this bar tomorrow night at ten. Will that do? I cannot... The two of us who will talk to you and then you'll understand. Understand what? Be advised, Romulo. Tomorrow night at this bar, at ten, you will come. Won't you? Yes, 
Just a minute, everybody. Five minutes break. Look, set up that new angle, Charlie, while you're waiting, and uh, we'll shoot it once again before lunch. Clay? Romulo, where in hell have you been? I'm sorry, Clay. Wondering. I have had things on my mind. Well, it's a fine time for that. Don't you realize we're three days behind schedule on this picture? I needed you bad this morning, kid. Baumbein was down here tearing the tripe out of me. Baumbein? I thought the Folie Berger would have kept him in Paris for at least a week. Uh, we're spending his money, and so he hates us. Listen, Romulo, this scene won't gel. I've tried it a dozen different ways. Well, I knew it was going to be difficult, but... Sure, so why advise it? You know, Rome, like the back of your hand. That's why I got you appointed technical advisor. You could have picked some other location. Well, I felt that... Oh, Clay, I, I do not know. Perhaps you made a mistake in me. It was only sympathy, nothing else, that made you give me this job. No, no, that's not true. I want to see you in pictures, kid. We're going to be making a whole lot here when things get moving. You could be right in the center of it. But we do not see the same things, your picture people and me. It is difficult to know, and now I am worried. Oh, not again. Honest, Romulo, we got some deadlines to beat. This time, this time it is serious worry. I, I cannot think of anything else. Oh, okay, kid, okay. So I'll have one more try at this scene, and then we'll go back and look at the rushes. Maybe that'll buck you up. This is the last scene we took, A.K., the drunken crowds reeling through the streets after the orgy. What's the scenic effect you got there, Clay? Who wanted that in? Oh, that's the Arch of Constantine, A.K. Who put it up? Is he on my payroll? A.K., the Arch of Constantine is an ancient Roman monument. Well, I don't like it. It's dirty. It goes. But, A.K., it's authentic. Clay. Okay, thanks, Harry. Nobody puts any old arch in my picture without I say so. I've got to think of my returns. You appreciate that factor, don't you, Mr. Mancini? Uh, why, of course, Mr. Bombine. Sure, I know the way you feel on account of you're a Roman, and so you think these things are very beautiful. Well, maybe they are, too, but I'm considering the folks back home who are going to see this movie. Well, I want Song of Rome to be socko with them. And that means I don't have no arches like that one. Well, there you are, then. I, I read the script. I thought for its period, the Arch of Constantine would be the perfect setting. Although, of course, the orgy, as you have got it, is a bit out of place in his reign. Mr. Mancini, don't talk goofy. We got panoramic and multivivatic color in this picture. That'll take only the best scenic effects, the very best. Don't you have any appreciation of the commercial angle? A.K., look, I'll fix this. Romulo is not so good today. Well, then fix it good. This guy was your idea, not mine, Clay. And I don't have to tell you this production is three days behind schedule. And that ain't the fault of anyone on my staff but you and Mr. Mancini. Okay, now just let's see if we can't get some real action around here. If we can't, well, I may have to make some changes. Don't think I can't. It's in the contract. My legal branch drew it up real tight. See in TV. So long. Ah, oh, you see, what is the use? He sees different things. Ah, oh, now, kid, don't let that get you. Why, guys like AK just blow their top on principle. They wouldn't be happy if they didn't have something to gripe about. Let's just forget that and get down to cases. No, no, I am no good to you, to your business or anything. I have made one mistake after another. And now I have got things on my mind. But, Romulo, what is it? Honest, I never met such a guy. You're up and down like a balloon. You forget I'm a blue blood, sensitive. Also, I'm supposed to be a sick man. And today, an old problem has come back to haunt me. Well, what? You can tell Uncle Clay. My wife. Your wife? I didn't know you had a wife. No, most people do not. The marriage was very much frowned upon by the other Roman families. Well... I wanted, above all else, an heir. I am the end of my life. She did not want that. It became a question of more money for her, drinking for me. She knew I could not escape. Divorce was out of the question. Nobody would recognize the child of a second marriage while the first wife was still alive. It was sad in its way. 
It was one night. I had been drinking more than ever up in my room on the top floor of that palace of mine, Kies and Wolf. Suddenly, the door was flung open, and she stood before me. And I could tell from her face that something was wrong. She had been to a doctor. She was going to have a child. It was a mistake, she said. Something she had not reckoned upon. But now that it had happened, she would turn it to good. If I did not make over half my property to her, she would deny me the thing I so dearly wanted. <laughs> and then she laughed. As the horror of what she had demanded penetrated to my dull brain, I got up from the table where I was sitting. I stumbled towards her, seized her by the arm, and suddenly she was gone from my sight gone and her laughter had changed to a cry. She had fallen. She lay still at the bottom of the stairs. She was not dead. She was not even badly hurt. But of course it was the end of the child. I paid her brother and her a large sum of money to Keep quiet about it and leave Rome forever. And now, my friend, they are back. Well, what do they want, Romulo? I don't know. I am not innocent, but neither are they. So if it is a question of more reprisals, more blame to be accepted by me and kept silent in them, I will die sooner than give them what they want. Night over Rome, ancient city of the Western world. Softly the fountains play. The wind is stilled among the trees on the seven hills. Darkness shrouds the great monuments of the past. And in the modern cafe on Via Vittorio Veneto, Romolo Mancini, last surviving member of an ancient and noble Roman family, stands once again at the little bar, waiting. Mineral waters, please. Si, senor. <sighs> that sigh. Why do you sigh so much like that, Romolo? Is it your condition or your conscience? Alessandro, where is she? You have brought her? Look behind you. The table in the corner. So, not changed a day, you were going to say? Uh, Romolo, she has been through such trials. Give me a little time alone with her first. You can join us in a few minutes. Of course, of course. As you desire. Hello, Carla. Sit down, Romolo. You're not looking well. I am not well. And I can't offer you anything to drink, Alessandro says. With a few drinks, you are always gay. With too many. <laughs> what is it you want? Money? I told Alessandro yesterday there'd be no more money. You've changed, haven't you? Alessandro told you that. I know it. Do look at you anyway. Well, perhaps just as you've become sober, I've become honest. <laughs> Romulo, wait and see. I have a confession to make to you, and when I make it, you'll realize that there could be no dishonest motive. My dear Carla, we will never repair for the common virtues of mankind. So don't let us play saints with each other. If I am no longer a drunk, it is simply because to drink would be death. In your case... Don't you ever regret what happened? Of course. For my sake or because there was a child? For both. But that is something you could never understand. So, there's a redeeming feature. Well, that is in me too. And perhaps that's something you could never understand. It's the whole reason why I've come. Well, what is your confession? 
Your child is alive, Romolo. He wasn't killed in that accident. He was born after Alessandro and I left Rome. A perfectly normal little boy. What? I've called him Enrico. He's getting on for two. Are you mad? No child could have lived after that fall. It's impossible. I don't believe it. Then you must come and see. He, he's here? In Rome? Of course. It's where he belongs. Take me to him at once. Well, Romolo, you've seen him. What have you to say now? I do not know. He is sleeping peacefully. I did not wake him. He has a look of me, I think, but... But what? How can I be sure? How do I know for certain that little boy is my son? But, but Romolo, why would we want to deceive you? I don't know. There would be money in it for you, of course, if he were my son. Why? Because I would have to make up to both of you for so much. I sent you away from Rome. We were enemies. I cannot believe you would do this for me just because of a change of heart. Well, there you are. If we can't make you believe, obviously you won't. But you've seen the birth documents. Those could be forged. Oh, of course. Uh, you give us credit for too much subtlety, Romolo. Well, I'm going to have a drink. Anyone join me? Just mineral waters. Mineral waters. I mean a real drink. This is a time of great rejoicing for you, Romolo. You've got an heir at last. A Mancini to carry on the line. Shut up! Just as you prefer. There's some cognac here anyway. I shall make every possible endeavor to check your story from beginning to end. If it seems true, then you shall have your money. Never fear about that. But I don't want money. Oh, Romolo, can't you understand or try to understand? I've brought your son to you. Disbelieve it if you like, but don't bolster your pride by continuing to tell yourself that there couldn't be any good in me. My pride? <laughs> we are a pretty pair, aren't we? We always were. It's a great pity. You don't mean... No, 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 no. It's too late for that. I don't believe in bringing ruins up to date. You and I have had enough of each other. But I do... I do want you to know. Alessandro! Alessandro! Oh, here, Carl. Drink some of this. Tablets. My bag. Oh, of course. Here, take two and some cognac with them. Of course. Oh, thank, thank you. Ah, uh, that's better. She'll sleep for a little while now. Oh. I'd better put her on the bed. Oh. What is it? What is the matter with her? The accident, Romolo. That same accident of two years ago. It left its scar. The attacks began ten months ago. They become more frequent. One day, there will be no more. This is the retake of the orgy scene, A.K. Eh? Man, this came up well. We got some spontaneity on it, something real. When you get this printed and dubbed, it'll be tremendous. Yeah, nice composition. I'll say, Romulo and I sweated on it, didn't we, kid? And what's that background you got now? Uh, out on the beat, soccer a bit. Who picked it? Well... Oh, that's it. Hey. You better be happy, A.K. There's genius in those shots. I asked who picked the location. Did you, Mr. Mancini? You see, Mr. Bombay. Of course, Romolo did. I'm eh? talking to Mr. Mancini, Clay. Well? You know I didn't, Mr. Bombay, so I ask. I wanted that I should hear it from you. There's also a rumor around that you haven't been anywhere near a set these last three days. Is that right, too? It is. Too bad, Mr. Mancini. Yeah, just too bad. Looks like I'm going to have to find myself a new technical advisor, doesn't it? You was never right in the first place, but when I find you ain't even on a set. Brother, you're just dead wood in my book. Pick up your check, Mr. Mancini. A.K. I don't think you'll find your way back in the pictures. I got a respect for my profession. You see if I don't have. See you in radio. So long. Double all that. 
Romulo, you can't say I haven't warned you. What'd you want to go and play hooky for when you were under fire? Man, you're crazy. I am sorry, Clay. I am sorry for how I have embarrassed you. But I am no use to anyone, you see. I've said it before. No use to the modern world. Not even any use to the old, since I have not a son. Well, you're out of pictures anyway. I'm sorry, kid, but you are. Uh, it's just as well. There was only one thing I was ever born to do, and that was to continue my life. But that failed. The flame has burned out at the end of the line. Yeah, so now what happens? Do I offer to blow your brains out for you? No, no, no. But there is a favor you could do for me. Well, what's that? Hey, all this isn't something to do with your wife coming back, is it? What gave in that direction? I was wrong, that is all. Wrong again. The last mistake this time, the one that brings the wheel full circle... And throws me back on my own despair. Pride. It is a deadly sin, is it not? And I am full of it. But you will do me this favor. Oh, sure. Then I have some papers here. Take them and read them. And then meet me at that little bar on Vittoria Veneto. I've taken you to sometimes. I'll be there in an hour. After I have seen someone else. <laughs> Romolo. Ah, Alessandro. I'm glad you could come. I had to talk to you. But why in the street? You could have called. Carla is waiting to hear from you. No, no. She will not hear from me. I have been into the matter fully. As you are aware, the little boy is neither mine nor hers. Oh? But I will take him just the same. He will be looked after. Now tell me, why did she do it? A and who is the child? An orphan? Well, uh, Romolo, I don't oh, know. come along, come along. The forgeries of the birth documents are really excellent, but we might as well have the truth at last. And as you will understand, I cannot go to see Carla herself. Very well. She wanted to do something for you, something that would make you happy before she died. But why? Because... Because I think she was sorry for the hurt she brought to you. I do not understand it. And yet I knew it must be that. It was the one thing I never dreamed she would do, try and make up for the past. And so I must resign myself to the last ditch of my family pride. I have no heir, and I can no longer blame the woman responsible. She has redeemed herself. There is only myself left to take the blame. Romulo. And you know, Alessandro, that is insupportable. But we will keep Carla in the dark, you and I. You will tell her that I am deceived, that I think the child is mine. He has a look of me after all. And Carla deserves the reward of her redemption. As you wish, of course. I will see that the child is cared for. And you will take Carla away. If you should ever need anything for her, get in touch with my solicitors. I have given them instructions about her. In case anything should happen to me in the meantime. But what would happen to you, Romulo? It happened many years ago. It has come to its conclusion. That is all. Romulo, I don't get it. You're signing all your dough over to some kid I've never even heard of, and you want me to act as trustee. Well, you will do that for me, won't you, Clay, for old time's sake? Oh, sure, if you want me to, but why? What are you going to live on? This reads like a will. <laughs> I told you pride was a deadly sin, did I not? The ancient Romans suffered from it. And when their self-sufficiency let them down, they ran upon their swords. Today, of course, we have more subtle methods. What are you talking about? Let us have something to drink, eh? Waiter! That's crazy. I never met a guy like you. Si, senores. Would you like... Oh, I know your wish, senor. You will have... Brandy, please. Brandy for my friend. And myself.
Big City, Stories of Life in the Modern Metropolis. Sad Song was written specially for this series by Bruce Stewart, narrated by Alan Trevor with the following players. Dinah Shearing, Lloyd Burrell, Nigel Lovell and Stuart Ginn, with Richard Davies as Romolo Mancini. Big City is a Harry Durth production directed by Maurice Travers.